When a movie comes out that is an adaptation of a book or comic or what have you, but is not the first adaptation to be made, it's not a remake. It bothers me when people call movies like, say, for instance, Willy Wonka a remake, because it implies that they don't know that the Gene Wilder version was itself not original. The only time one of these movies is a remake is if the inspiration for it is the earlier film, not the original source material. I'd argue, for instance, that every version of The Wizard of Oz that's come along since the Judy Garland movie is, in fact, a remake. Which, in a roundabout way, brings me to the topic of this series of videos, Dracula. It seems to me that the majority of Dracula movies are based on the play, and by extension the movie with Bela Lugosi, not Bram Stoker's novel. So, out of curiosity, being a huge geek, I decided to really get into this by way of analyzing the various characters in each version. The Novel Okay, for starters, Dracula is not a love story. Unless you're talking about the love between Jonathan Harker and Mina. In the original novel, Dracula is just a straight-up villain. His motives are purely malevolent, not even just acting out of hunger. If that were the case, he wouldn't have expended so much energy in taking Lucy. He probably wanted Harker out of the way because he knew too much, as the classic villains would say. Either that, or he simply had promised his brides that they could have the dude once he'd served his purpose. We get, really, all we need of him as an actual character in the beginning with Harker's journal. After that, he becomes this vague, unseen presence that exudes malice and dread. If you want to know just how evil he is, look at how this original version of him interacts with the Children of the Night. Even they detest him, though they do answer his commands. He uses a wolf to smash the protected window of Lucy with no regard to injury to the animal. His reasons for going after Mina is pure vengeance for the heroes thwarting him. Like I said, straight up villain. His motives for moving to London in every adaptation are probably simply that food has gotten scarce and those that remain know how to ward him off. Lucy I think Lucy was the prototype for many of the lovable girl characters down through the ages. The one that comes immediately to mind is Fred from Angel. Clearly, part of the horror of the story is that Dracula can target someone so pure and kind-hearted and turn them into something so wanton and evil. It's a complete change for her, and remember, by the standards of the time, for a woman to act, well, outwardly sexual, would have been shocking enough. Here is a woman who inspired men not only to desire her, but to love her. There's a difference. If they only desired her, then once they knew they didn't stand a chance, they likely would have been on their way. But all three of her suitors were perfectly willing to give up their blood to save her. I really think that this whole situation is what was going through Joss's mind when he came up with Fred's predicament, and the men in the show willing to do anything to try to save her, doomed though their attempts may have been. Harker Harker really goes through the ringer in this book, which makes it a shame that he kind of gets short-shafted in every adaptation. He's a guy who's trying to have a normal life, good job, get married, etc., and he winds up having to escape from a haunted castle and then try to save the woman he loves from a fate worse than death. And it's appropriate that he, the first to encounter Dracula and the guy most traumatized by him, gets to deliver the killing blow. I think the only more appropriate person to do so would be Mina, though given Drek's influence over her, that might have been hard to accomplish. Speaking of Mina, the quintessential good girl of the 19th century, devoted fiancé, but thankfully with a mind of her own, it may mostly be bent towards the good of her man, but still, clearly intelligent and, above all, brave. When she finds out what's going on, she doesn't shrink from it, but does all she can to help put a stop to it. The Count targets her out of revenge, and there's nothing romantic in their relationship at all. He's even malicious enough in his dealings with her that he doesn't use any hypnotism when he comes to her the final time. He forces her acquiescence by threatening Harker and then uses brute force. He wants her to know exactly what he's doing and why. Quincy. It's odd to me that Quincy, not Arthur, is the one besides Harker who gets in the final blow on Dracula. Harker takes off the Count's head, and Quincy stabs him through the heart. Maybe since Arthur got to put Lucy out of her misery, and Dr. Seward got to have all that interaction with Renfield, Stoker needed another reason for Quincy to be in the story. Because for the most part, he's there just to provide more illustration to what a good person Lucy is. Pretty much the same way that her other suitors are. 
and he's not the most interesting character except when Stoker is having fun writing American slang. He's laconic and brave and a good shot, and that's pretty much it. Arthur. By rights, he should be the hero of this story next to Harker, the love interest of the other female lead, and really beyond that he has little function. He has more reason than most of the characters to want the Count dead. But, like I said, he got to put Lucy down. Also, I suppose he was there to provide a logistical reason why the party were able to pursue the Count. Not only was he rich, but he was a lord, a title carried a lot of weight in that society. Seward. The original version of Dr. Seward was a psychiatrist, psychologist, who, at an impressively young age, became the head of a lunatic asylum. He was best friends with Quincy and Arthur and a suitor of Lucy. He plays a pivotal role in the story as he's the one who really gets all the characters together. Renfield. Just a simple lunatic trying to get through life the best he can. It makes sense that he would fix it on Dracula, though how he became aware of him, I'm not certain. Dracula must have cased the asylum as a possible feeding ground. Van Helsing. This guy seems to travel back and forth from England to Germany a lot. Admittedly, a lot of my impression of this character came from the fact that in the audiobook, Tim Curry narrated his letters, which made me wish that more of the story was told from his point of view. One thing that we don't see in many of the films is that Van Helsing is just as scared as anyone else throughout this whole ordeal. We do get a sense of this in his tale of getting Mina to the castle. He says he has an indulgence in terms of the Eucharist wafers. Maybe it means something other than what I think, but it sounds like he likes to snack on them. 